are the bits? Show me the bits. Oh, that. There they go. We're live. All that horrendous stuff that you were just talking about, Lewis. You need to stop. What? All, all those I, offensive I, things I, that you were talking about. I I, I protest. Okay. You need to self-censor now because we're going to go live and YouTube will kick us out if they hear what you're saying. Not only will YouTube, YouTube kick us out, but we'll be drummed out of a civil society. Thou shalt not speak the truth. <laughs> Boom! And we're live! Shout out to oh, the, Steve, the first one here, Stephen W. Bird. Hey, y'all! <laughs> uh, how's everyone doing? We got an exciting show for you all this week. We got iPhone 13. Oh, shoot. Look at this button. It's just... These pecs are unstoppable, Lewis. You see what's going on here? It's just a... Uh, you got to pop a button? You guys want a little peek of, of, of what's going on under here? Look at that. Mm. Oh. Can you just tell the chisel that's happened between those two pectoralis majors? Hi. <laughs> Did you call it chisel? It's called chisel, Lewis. It's something that... <laughs> it's a term you haven't heard in relation to pecs in a long time. <sighs> Uh, yeah, these buttons are just, they're about to pop off and hit the screen at about 400 feet per second. God, look at that. Full they're, just, rig now. they're just, they're just screaming to come out. <laughs> you want to see them bounce? You want to see them dance, Lewis? Let's see if I can. Oh mm, my mm, God. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ulysses Martinez, he's saying body of a Greek God. Come on. Demi, demigod, maybe. <sighs> Shout out to Jack. He just says, hey, yeah. I think you spelled y'all y'all wrong. Ulysses Martinez, that's a little bit better. Hello, uh, Christopher Gavin. Hello from Texas. So oh, originally a Brit in Texas. How do you feel about that, Leander? Cool. <laughs> Hair of a Greek god. Okay, that's you heard god. it here first. Cool. <laughs> Mr. Medusa. <laughs> well, I, was, I, I thought about, you know, I had a whole bunch of thoughts. Like, you know, hot. It's going to be hot. I hope his AC is working. Yeah, uh, The grid's going down. And I thought about barbecue. Oh, I man, of- I love barbecue. That famous um, phrase that uh, in Texas you only get, you know, um, uh, people in steers. What? Gay people in steers, you know that phrase? No. I probably shouldn't say that. Okay. <laughs> get the horn or something? I don't know. Go for the bull, get the horn. I I, I don't know. All I know is uh, I, I, th- I think I want to move to Texas, quite honestly. I'm not actually been. Have you been? Yeah, I've been there before. It's It's what? hot. I, I like hot, though. If you like hot, then then you don't care about Texas. And the other thing is, the Texas houses are actually affordable, and they're palatial. When you go and, and look at the listings in Austin, and Austin's like one of the most expensive areas there are, but you could go to the surrounding areas. You can buy a freaking uh, a Victorian manor for $400,000 there. It's just crazy. Huge houses. You get a pool, and it's warm and beautiful every single day. You get to just pig out on on barbecue every day and just get to be like 500 pounds and then go in your pool. That's exactly <laughs> what I would do right now. Right now. I've been trying to grow like a, you know, like a size C moob for years, and I just can't do it. There's not enough caloric availability here in Seattle. It's all like greenery and like olive oil and stuff. Kale. Yeah. You can't do that with kale. Too much of that crap, yeah. Yeah, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to eat that stuff. Let's see here. Christopher Gavin, the house I have in Texas, I could never begin to afford in London. Yeah, well, that's true. I think of many states. Well, as London, well. my God, yeah, I lived in some real dumps in London. <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> Not fit for human habitation. But, and they're all like that, right? Unless you're going to spend like a tremendous yeah, amount of money. of money. Right, right. All right, probably why Joe Rogan moved too. Oh man, he probably moved for several reasons. I mean, the thing about Joe Rogan. Okay, as long as we're doing a tangent, Joe Rogan, for those of you that don't know, moved to Texas, moved his whole operation to Texas because he's just making, you know, a, a bazillion dollars podcasting and doing other things. But California has, I think they have the highest state income tax in the country. So if you just got a contract with Spotify for $100 million, which is what Spotify reportedly paid him to make his podcast exclusive to Spotify. By the way, Spotify, I would do that for a fraction. You wouldn't have to pay. You could pay me a million, and I'd move to Texas. Actually, you know what? Just pay my moving fees, <laughs> and get me like a uh, a few new microphones, and I would move. But um, you're gonna give how much of that are you willing to give to California? Thirteen million dollars to the state of California when you could just move to Texas and not have to pay that. I mean, it kind of seems like a no-brainer. You know that they'll spend it on something really righteous. 
Oh, yeah, something very high quality for sure. All right, guys. Well, we are uh, rapidly losing audience. People don't come here to hear us talk about <laughs> things that are not Apple. Actually, some of you do. Blame them. People are smart. It's the marketplace of ideas. Bankrupt. We'll, we'll save this maybe to, to the end of the show. But um, as we precipitously drop viewers here, we're going to go ahead and uh, get Mrs. D in here. Mrs. D. Yes. Ah, Mrs. D. So subdued today. Oh, well, you know, I'm tired. And I just put on my face cream, which is very uh, creamy. creamy. <laughs> no, it's when things are creamy, it makes you tired. Well, that is true. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get the show started because we got a lot of stuff to, to get through this, this episode. So let me go ahead and uh, pull up all my stuff and make sure everything's going here. And uh, wait a second. That's not what I meant to do at all. Let's put that down there. And then we're going to get this music going, and we're going to get the fun started. Here we go. Hello, and welcome to Talkcast Eat Fast, 30 plus minute alpha conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your host, everyone allowed to join me today. His parole officer says his behavior has been so good this year. If he keeps it up, they might even remove the ankle bracelet and let him attend a Apple keynote. Something to look forward to. He's the founder of Cultimac. Leander Kahaney is here. <laughs> also with us. When not editing articles on coldmac.com, you'll find him slapping the base, sharpening his darts collection, or slopping food scraps in the Coltamac writer's trough. They love slop time. He's the managing editor of Coltamac. <laughs> this is here. Slopping the hogs. That's uh slopping the hogs. I hear from uh many writers. That's the wrong that's the wrong dial. Sorry. That's why the music's not going down. I've heard from countless writers that that was one of their favorite favorite perks of working at Cult of Five Mac. Like Alex, he's like, dude, I love Irfan, Irfan. I love slop time because you're writing, you're hungry, right? Instead of having to go get a poke bowl, which costs like seventeen dollars, Lewis just comes in with a bucket. It's like a bucket. It's like half liquid, half solid, full of things that he's been eating. For the whole week. <laughs> Well, you know, the way, have you ever read Charlotte's Web, that book about the pig that um, makes friends with the spider? Yeah. E.B. White, famous children's book. Um, I mean, it talks about the pig getting slop. And I, I remember reading that book and really wanting to try some slop, thinking it really sounded delicious. What do you mean <laughs> you're from the UK? I thought that's what you guys ate over there. <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. Better than what I was normally eating. Yeah, better than my mom's cooking. Wow. Oh, man. There's a scene in, did, did you ever see the cartoon version of Charlotte's Web? I, I just known. saw the live action one. You saw okay, live action. There, there <laughs> is, there is a classic scene from that movie where there's the rat named Templeton, right? And uh, he accidentally falls into the trough, and he just gets punk drunk or punch drunk because he got to eat all the slop, and he comes out and he's just like he's increased in size like three or four times, and he's got like this huge gut because yeah, he just that's got what to I wanted to happen. Yeah, <laughs> he had to swim to the trough and just like eat all the garbage that was in there. Oh, wouldn't that be heaven? How, wouldn't that be how great? How did you remember the details? Have you seen that within the past five years or something? Uh, how did I remember the details of that movie? No, it was, it's one of the few things that has been crystallized in my brain. It was like one of those childhood memories from, you know, because I saw that movie so many times when I was a kid. And it's like, it was such a funny scene that, and he had like this song that he would do when he came out. I think it's been a long time. But uh, that's, oh. Leander, that's Leander's dream is swimming through the trough of slop. <laughs> well, go into the writer's, the writer's pen where, where we keep all the writers. And uh, you can do that. You can, go to, you can go to the bathroom in the bucket that Lewis gave them, the Home Depot bucket. You get the full <laughs> cult of <laughs> experience. Yeah. Wow. He put a, the he put a toilet, he put a toilet, a toilet seal on the, bu on the bucket. So at least they'd be comfortable because for a long time, they just <laughs> had to sit on the rim. It slides around a little bit though. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, not it, bolted it, down. <laughs> It's, it's a, an intelligence away. and balance test. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. Well, this is your first time here. I'm sure it will probably, be, probably also be your last. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, we may not be the most accurate. We may not be the most factual, but no one's having more fun than us. So we do have some Apple stories to share with you all this week. Let's see here. Let me bring up my notes. Oh, my goodness. We have iPhone 13. Here it is. If you're ready to see it, I've got pictures to show you. And then we'll also recap all of the different changes that you can expect. Now, it may seem strange that we're talking about iPhone 13, but, dude, it probably is going to be announced in three months. So it's literally right around the corner. So we'll talk about that. We'll show you the pics. You'll know what to expect. And uh, I also thought we could take a look at 
some pictures of Apple's most beautiful stores. You know, they have the, the most beautiful retail experiences all over the world. They just opened a new one in L.A., and we're going to talk about it. We'll show you some pictures, and we'll show you some pictures from some of their other breathtaking stores. You know, the stores are so beautiful. They're constructed to get you into that Jim Morrison, I just did peyote in the desert state, where you don't even mind the dollars are going to fly out of your wallets. That's how they do it. And then also, we got to recap some of the shows coming to Apple TV+. Plus. Now, I know a lot of people aren't necessarily interested in Apple TV+. Plus, and the reason that I bring this up is because we have a lot of stuff on the way. And I think you'll actually be surprised how much content is already available on Apple TV+, Plus and how much is coming. Now, I'm not shilling for them. I don't care if you watch it or not. I've got... Actually, I do have a lot of Apple stocks, so <laughs> I guess I do, uh, I, I do have a stake in the game, but I really don't care. Although, as many of you know, the Apple TV Plus trial, it ends uh, at the end of this month. So you got to decide, are you going to keep it or are you going to uh, you know, cut your uh, subscription loose and, and, and not pay attention to the content that's coming out? And there's a lot of stuff coming out. You'll be shocked. Let's see. Before we dive into all the fun, I'm going to send it over on over to Lewis Wallace, Slop, the provider of Slop. Speaking of Slop, Lewis, what do we got in the uh, Cult of Mac store that you'd like to talk about? Uh, yeah, I uh, got a few new items in there this week. Uh, uh, got. Some... Oh man, they're one. Oh yeah, they've got a lot of great stuff. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Is it the mag state the mag safe uh, sticker, right? Yep. I'm looking for all this stuff. Oh yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. here. It is. Offer cord management and just gives you a, a like a little hub where you can put your stuff. Uh, we also got uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I, I can't again. I can't remember the name. T one R one something like that. They got a, a new uh, silicone cover for the Apple TV remote for the new Apple TV remote. You know. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Hold on one sec, Lewis. Okay, oh, sorry about oh. that. I I made a mistake. I, I accidentally muted your mic. Um, I got tired of hearing you, so I tried to mute it, so I didn't have to hear you anymore. But I accidentally muted you for the stream as well, so I uh, I brought you back. <laughs> so none of that. Yeah, so so they heard none of that, Lewis. <laughs> you, so, want, you, want, you want to start from the take top? Two. Yeah, start start from the top. Saying? Yeah. Why don't, we just, why don't we just talk about the the one the case for the remote? That's a good one. Well, hold on. I I, I have the uh, the stylus charging hub pulled up here. So do you want to just say a quick note about the El Lago? charging hub real fast i guess you were saying it's just got cool shapes cool yeah, triangle I mean, I, it's, shapes something a little bit different up with these cool looking things i've been, i've never seen a triangular one like that and i got that i have a blue one look at yeah it's kind of weird yeah totally okay oh uh, I, oh i see what you did there and they're all in the same look at that okay that's hip that's fancy i'm looking at the silicone case now too the uh for the tv yeah the tv remote yeah it's for the new apple tv remote and uh i, I haven't actually try, had my chance to uh try one of these yet but uh i had the previous uh, silicone case, which is a, a lifesaver with the previous Apple uh, Siri. A Apple Siri. God, I, I'm having a real hard time talking today. I'm, I'm going to remute you. Start, start going with the <laughs> sign language or something. If this continues, uh, I'm just going to remute you, dude. That's the Ooh. idea. Uh, the previous, the really super slim Apple TV remote, which, uh, you know, I every time I used it, I had it upside down or wrong or whatever, and it just drove me batty. Uh, the new one is not that problematic, but uh, they, they have a, a new remote for it anyway, or a new cover for it anyway. Yeah. And uh, the thing that I think would be good about it is, I, I tell me, you, you, have you got the new remote? Uh, I haven't purchased it yet, but I'm definitely going to. It, I actually am not totally in love with the way that thing feels in my hand. Because, you know, it's aluminum, it's cold, and the edges are almost kind of sharp like a, yeah. an iPhone, you know, the latest iPhone. Yeah. It's not rounded and smooth. And so I bet you that that silicone case 
feels kind of good in your hand. Uh, oh, no, and I know Lewis, it, is know, it too sharp for your hand? I, I said, like, I said oh, like no. you know, oh, it might, it'll probably, you know, it gives you some protection, right? And and people on Twitter are like, oh, this thing is bulletproof. It's a tank. It's not going to be, you know, and it's true. It, it doesn't have, like, that glass part at the top that'll shatter if you drop it the wrong way. But uh, I bet you you can dent that thing if you try. And uh, anyway, there you go. It's also got magnets in it, so if you have something uh, metal that you want to stick it on, you know, like if you, I, I, I don't actually know how many things like that there are. I mean, it says it works with some TVs, uh, you know, the the magnet part. But you know, if you've got a refrigerator right by your TV, and who doesn't? Uh, <laughs> that would be perfect. I've got several uh, metal. If also, if you have like, a metal plate in your skull, you could just let him get vaccinated. It'll stick to you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh boy, they're gonna. You said the word vaccination. Are you trying to get us kicked off of YouTube? YouTube? Yeah, right off YouTube. Sorry, Leander. I'm trying. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I really like this. Uh, this case for the Leander remote. Katie said. Yeah, don't talk about those topics. You're gonna get gonna get us booted forever. So uh, those are all available on the uh, Cultimac store, which is store.cultimac.com. Store.cultimac.com. I really do want to get my hands on the new Apple TV remotes. Unlike Lewis's hands mine are tough my skin's practically <laughs> like leather so i won't notice oh no these sharp edges in my hands it hurts when i change the channel i won't i won't be complaining about that oh you but uh, uh you also mentioned these new um ilago stickers right the the mag oh yeah 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 yeah, uh, yeah. basically you know you put it on the back of a non-magsafe phone and uh you could get the magsafe uh magnetic capability right so, which honestly dude is is really interesting to me because i have the 11 pro and I have the I don't have it here. I never have it here. I, I have the um the MagSafe Duo charger, which is Apple's charger for the Apple Watch and for the phone. And mm -hmm. I really like it a lot, but the bummer is is that the magnet doesn't really attach strongly to the back of the phone. So it will kinda like there's a little bit of magnetism there, but it doesn't snap on. And so having something like this actually might be kind of useful because then you could take advantage of all the MagSafe you know, MagSafe is the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah. Especially for like, I got a MagSafe battery pack. That thing is a, is just genius. You know, that's the best battery pack I've ever had. No fiddly cables. Which one is it? <laughs> Do you remember? Um, it's a no name brand, and I don't okay. have it here. And it, um, it did attach pretty firmly to the back of your phone. Is that what you really like about it? Yeah, yeah, it, and you know, you can put it in your pocket. Um, it's uh, it's only totally, you know, because yeah, it, it does attach it firmly enough, and it won't it won't dislodge. I mean, I sometimes I have to take the case off. I take I've got a a a, 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 a see through case, so sometimes yeah. I take that off to get a better to get a better connection. But yeah, it's great. That's the one thing about that I do really actually kind of am disappointed that I don't have with this 11 Pro. I'm definitely going to get the get iPhone that sticker. 13. That sticker is genius. That, I mean, that's it's super clever idea. Yeah, it is a really uh, useful idea, and it's like, what is it, like 13 bucks or something? I can pull it up. Oh, it's $11. You guys should send me one to review on the show here. I'm sure, yeah, I'm we, sure a Lago will send me. That. Dude, we, yeah. I, I should have, we should have a Lago send us this stuff so we can talk about it on the show. What the heck? Well, Got to ask him more than a minute before the show starts. <laughs> well, that's as much time <laughs> as I spend preparing, so I mean, that's, not gonna that's not going to happen. Maybe, that fast. maybe I could just give my address and say, anytime anything new comes out, just send it to me, and uh, and then we'll talk about it on the show. <laughs> we, we, we should definitely have people do that, because we could just talk about stuff on the show, and our show gets hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube. Um, and then YouTube goes in and artificially changes the numbers for some reason. I think it's because um, <laughs> they don't want to they don't want to let us get large too fast, which I appreciate. But uh, yeah, we could definitely give them some juice on the show. So there you go, store.cultimac.com. Um, hey guys, do me a favor. I've literally never asked this before, and I don't usually shill for likes. I just let people like if they want. But I'm really just kind of curious what will happen for everyone that's watching live. Click on the like. And I'm curious if that is, is going to make the YouTube algorithm broadcast the show to more people. Because usually what happens when we're doing the show live, like we start off with a small group of people who are subscribed to the channel. And then all of a sudden, we get a large influx of users like halfway into the show, probably because they know it takes us at least 30 minutes to actually warm up and say anything of value <laughs> on this show, which actually is true. But uh, there we oh, whoa, the likes are going up. Thank you for yeah, all of you who are know, doing that. I'm just curious to see what happens if it, if you know it spikes our show numbers. Yeah, Probably a tweet would help. Oh shoot! Did I forget the tweet? Oh, I don't know. I'm not seeing it. I did. It's sitting here, and it's perfect. Untweeted. It's been it's been tweeted. The tweet has oh. been tweeted. So thank you for everyone who just liked it. Um, I'm not gonna make this a habit of uh, shilling for likes, but um, I am curious to see what will happen. Are you going to include a female host on the cult cast? Oh sure, we would definitely consider doing that if we, Do we found someone who uh, 
cared about Apple stuff. <laughs> yeah. We barely know any males that care about Apple stuff. <laughs> we barely know anyone that cares about Apple stuff. I've tried to get us. my yeah. wife to come on the show, but she won't. She won't do it? Well, she's a smart lady. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Okay, so should we dive into the Apple news? Here we go. Here it is. You guys ready? Hold on, wait a second. Do I have a... No, that's the wrong one. Although that's accurate for most of the jokes we tell. No, that's not it. No. No, that's not it. Do I have... What was that? That's nothing. I thought I had a drum roll, but I, I guess I, uh, I removed the drum roll. Okay, so here we go. You want to see iPhone 13? Are you ready for it? I got a picture of it right here. I'm about to bring it up. Do you guys want me to share the screen with you guys so you can see what I'm doing here, Lewis and Leander? Do you care? Yeah, I'll just show yeah, it to yeah, you. Yeah, no, I want to say because I never see what's going on. Um, and that way uh, I can actually show you guys what is going on. Although um, now it's not. Uh, now where did it go? Yeah, where'd the window go? Uh huh. Uh, sad face. Okay, well I'm not gonna spend five minutes doing this because uh, the window disappeared. So I'm just gonna go ahead and. Oh wait, is that gonna do it? No, that didn't do it. All right, you guys just have to use your imaginations. Here we go. There it is. New iPhone 13 dummies and renders show incremental changes. <laughs> oh, boy. If you're expecting big changes for iPhone 13, well, don't expect them on the external part of the phone. It looks like those are going to be happening on the internal part. So this is Sonny Dixon showing uh, some photos. He, uh, he tweeted about this. Let's see here. Yeah, there they are. He's got some <laughs> schematics, I guess. Oh, this is Ian Zobo. This is... um. These uh, are Ian Zelbo's uh, renders and the renders that are always used by like front page tech and stuff based on the schematics that that leaked earlier. And then here are the actual dummies. You can see they look almost identical. And for those of you listening, I, if you just look at the phone you currently have, that's what the <laughs> phone's going to look like. It's going to look just like that. So uh, we have uh, iPhone 13, iPhone 13 Pro. And it looks like the Pro Max is here as well. And, yeah, it looks uh, looks pretty much exactly like uh, that we would expect. One, one question yeah. I have about this is why don't we, why don't this be the iPhone 12S? Yeah, well, some people are hoping that that's what it's called. Uh, <laughs> we can talk about that. Oh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. No, yeah, yeah let's okay. talk about that in a minute. So we don't actually know what it's going to be called, but I kind of hope they just do the 13. I, I like the solid numbers better than the S cycles, personally, but... Um, We'll see what Apple does. They seem like they are not married to any one kind of naming convention. They seem like they go all over the place. So, yeah, we're going to get pretty much exactly the same look, although we're hearing that there will be a slightly thicker phone for the Max. And uh, we have a story here about how the uh, the newer phones were, will uh, have more battery life, which will be a definitely a welcome feature. So one thing that you may notice here is a small oh, – I guess you can't see the front of the phone. No, you can't. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, wait. There we go. Sonny Dixon, front, front of the phone. Yeah, thank you. Is uh, It's supposed to have a smaller notch, which, um, you know, I don't even Ooh. notice the notch is there. So that's cool. I mean, no hate for a smaller notch. Also, there was a Eurasian economic report that um, suggested that, uh, well, that we were going to have a smaller notch, but also that we will probably get promotion on the new iPhones, which we've been talking about forever, which will result in a 120 hertz uh, screen refresh ra refresh rate versus 60. You know, it's funny. I know a lot of people are really excited about this. Am I in browser mode? No, I'm not. I haven't been showing it this whole time. Um, Great. So, yeah, well, <laughs> that's the way this uh, this show's going today. Uh, so let me go back up here. You can see the renders. I was showing those earlier. And uh, down here to where you can see the notch. And you can see the notch looks slightly smaller. Uh, ProMotion, they have it on the iPad Pro, and some people really seem to notice it. I have the iPad Pro. I don't really notice it there either. So maybe I'm just not using it enough for artistic purposes and drawing and stuff. And so your hands are too uh, burly, as you were mentioning. And they, yeah, slow. You don't moving. have those delicate fingers that you need to be able to tell that just yeah. how <laughs> buttery smooth that is. If only we had Alex E. Heath to, to rejoin us, and <laughs> those tiny, delicate hands that he had. I mean, he could have been a watchmaker. He he had such fine uh, articulation of his tiny little fingers and his tiny little palms. It really was cute. <laughs> so, <laughs> you remember? Do you, do you remember that SNL sketch of that of that girl with the tiny hands? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's always. I, I always think of Alexi e. Heath when I see her. Can I? Can I? Uh, let me see if I can bring this up. Um, SNL, S SNL tiny hands, <laughs> and I'll show you guys. For those of you that don't know, Alexi e. Heath. 
he's he's like a Hollywood big shot now. He used to be on the show, and we we launched his um his career into the stratosphere. And uh, oh, there they are. <laughs> there they are. There's Alexi e. Heath's tiny hands, as you can see, normal sized face, and I think he has his hairline too, right there. His, oh, hair, his hair starts uh, oddly very far back on his head, and then there's his tiny little hands right there. And you know they're they're delicate, <laughs> but that he can. Character is terrifying. They're um they're they're cute, but they're effective. You know he can reach into the places that most uh, adults and children can't. And he looks so cute when he eats cheese and like <laughs> uh, you know crackers and hummus and stuff because he just holds it with both hands and he just nibbles on it just like <laughs> that. You know, girl. <laughs> nibbles on it just like that. Uh, so anyway. I digress. That's Alex e. Heath. He used to be on the show, but now he works for... Oh, yeah, I forgot. I was going to say um, the information. But that traitor moved on to The Verge, which, uh, you know, suits him right because The Verge is awful. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it's really terrible. And I kept telling him, I was like, Alex, I was surprised to hear that you're moving to The Verge because I, I thought The Verge couldn't get any worse. But here we go. <laughs> let's 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 go. <laughs> let's go. Here. Oh, 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 right. Um iPhone 13. So what else are we going to be getting with iPhone 13? I really love Alex Heath, though, by the way, for those of you that don't know. I, 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 I love him. I also hate him. Uh, iPhone 13 will come with new improved batteries and faster 5G. Now, can I bring this up? Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So, How do you get faster 5G? Uh, well, I'll, I'll touch on that in just a moment. I don't think it's going to get faster for Does us in the U.S. 5G? Okay. It's going to get faster for all, the, uh, all of our wonderful U U.K. and uh, Europe listeners and viewers who who got the uh the crap version of 5g on uh the iphone 12 and may not even have known it apple pawned off this old crusty piece of hardware in, into your phone while the rest of us in the u.s got the faster 5g so uh the next gen iphone will boast more flexible sip battery modules and lcp antenna backing up previous rumors that it will come with a new improved battery and speedy ultra speed uh, 5G millimeter wave to uh, new countries. Uh, TF International Securities Analyst Min Chi Kuo reported back in March that the new iPhone will feature a superior battery. And uh, we've also heard that the uh, the new Max is going to be slightly bigger and slightly heavier, which might be because of the uh, newer battery. And also, it looks like it's going to have uh, some kind of new fancy antenna that will allow people in Europe to get uh, 5G. So before they were getting the, the sub 6 gigahertz uh, 5G, which had speeds of around 600 megabits, uh, 900 megabits per second, excuse me. And meanwhile, we in the U.S. got the much faster 5G. And yeah, so, we did. And so, uh, yeah, I saw speeds of like, of like 2 gigabits per second in some places. So... Uh, Did oh, you really? Uh, have you ever experienced any fast 5G? I anywhere? have not because I don't have a 5G iPhone. But the only time I saw speeds that were approaching 2 gigabits per second is when people were in like some kind of 5G zone that yeah. the carriers had built out to show how fast the technology could be. Yeah, there's like, you know, two blocks in downtown San Francisco. Yeah. Right in the middle of Zombieville. <laughs> Where you wouldn't want to take out your phone anyway, because someone would probably snatch it out of your hand and then <laughs> yeah, run. It'll be, it'll be stolen from your fa hand faster there. Yeah, <laughs> faster than five G. That's what they mean by faster five G. <laughs> That's what they mean by fast. Ah. Exactly. Like when they see that it has five G, they just come and steal it as fast as you can imagine. So, um, here's the full recap. Okay. Um. Oh yeah. So, God, gee. So the faster five G is up to uh, 5 gigabits per second capable. Now, as Lewis pointed out, are you going to get that speed? Hell no! Not unless you're in like the most uh, idyllic 5G scenario you could possibly imagine. Clear skies, you know, no buildings anywhere. You're, you're literally standing right next to the tower and it's, it's, shooting the, uh, it's shooting the beta rays right into your brain. And so, otherwise, you'll probably get a, a much more diminished experience. But dude, if I were getting like 1.5 gigabits per second, I would be thrilled with that. So here's an iPhone 13 recap for all of you wondering what you're going to see. So the, the new A15 chip, smaller notch, buttery smooth ProMotion display. The new matte black color. Now, look, see, I'm not sure if this is matte black. So I'm showing, that looks like gloss black right there, the one that Sonny Dixon is showing. So I'm not sure if this is, or maybe this is the matte black, but that looks space gray. I can't really tell. 
or maybe it's just the angle of the photo. So in any case, we're supposed to get matte black, LiDAR on all models like you cared, and a possible <laughs> one terabyte option. It's also possible, do I have this here? It's also possible that um, we might get Touch ID. Oh, here's the matte black. Got it right there. Perfect. Okay. Wish I would have brought that up 10 minutes ago. The return of Touch ID, which would be my most anticipated feature. And and honestly, I feel like they have to do something like this to really have it be a marquee feature. They can't just say, oh, yeah, better battery life, cameras improved. I mean, they could. They could. But I feel like this could be a really great marquee feature. Although, what's the point now that no one's wearing masks anymore? It's like, oh. <laughs> right. Although honestly, I'd still I still would welcome Touch ID on any iPhone because it gives you an option, Face ID or Touch ID, and um, there are instances where Face ID really isn't the most appropriate. So I would I would love to see a return of uh, Touch ID in some com- some capacity, and it's have really it be under be the screen. Sad be if great. that's the, the the marquee feature. Oh, we're bringing Why? back something we used to have. Why? Why, Lewis? <laughs> I mean, if that's if that's it, if that's the main thing. Wow, Touch ID is back. Oh, come on now. Wouldn't you be uh, happy to be able to unlock your phone with just a touch? Just a caress? Well, I mean, I'd be, I'd be, I think that's great, but I, I think it's pretty sad if that's the marquee feature. And, oh, uh, the notch is ever so slightly smaller. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know, man. I hope they come up with something. I hope, I hope that all these uh, sort of rumors and leaks are, you know, not giving us the full picture. I hope they come up with something, you know, much better. Uh, hold on you? a sec here. Let me see if I oh, have Oh, not a... again. Oh, no, no, no. We're good. What? What's the problem? <laughs> I'm looking for this story I was just on. Um, let's see here. There we go. Okay, so check out. Let me move this over here. Check out this uh, this notch on the current iPhone. Right, look how large it is. And then look at the no- look at the notch on the one that Sunny Dixon is showing. It's it's significantly smaller. It looks like it might even be half the size. So if you hate the notch, this could be a uh, a nice update for you. It really is a lot smaller. I, I didn't even realize how large the notch is on the phone. Yeah, it takes up like, what, two-thirds of the top of the phone? So, yeah, it looks like it's, it's going to be shrunk down at least, you know, by half. So, mm-hmm. there you go. There is your iPhone 13 recap. I'm excited to get one because I have an iPhone 11 Pro, and there's a lot of features on the 12 that I really would love to have, like the MagSafe stuff and the better camera. But it just wasn't enough of a... A change for me to warrant spending on the money because I spent a bunch of money on a bunch of recording stuff as well. So I'm like, I'd rather have a, new, a newer camera. But I know some people are not going to be upgrading to the new iPhone 13, and it may not be for the reason that you might suspect. And I have a feeling that wow. Leander might not be upgrading because he's very superstitious. Am I right, Leander? Yeah. Uh, actually, no. I'm a little. St- <laughs> Give us a little, little superstitious. Not very superstitious. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, what's his face? <laughs> they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna need to queue up the Stevie Wonder for the uh, the keynote there. So tell us about uh, why some people aren't gonna be buying the phone here, Leander. Yeah, so one, apparently one in five customers say they're gonna skip the iPhone 13 due to superstition. So a massive 74 percent of people surveyed think Apple's next iPhone should be called something other than the iPhone 13. And how do you pronounce this? Triskaidekaphobia. Tris- Triskaideka phobia. I think the, I- the ideal thing is you just say it real fast. Triskaideka phobia. Triskaideka phobia. Fear of number thirteen. <laughs> it sounds That's like something actually else, like... Uh, actually. But anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah. Well, never mind. If you say it fast, say it too fast. It sounds like a phobia of something else. But yeah, go. Super fragile, cakes me all Sorry, uh, I, uh, I I took you off track there. Go ahead. So anyway, yeah. So uh, uh, Triskaideka phobia. Yeah. Could um. <laughs> It could stop one in five Apple users from buying the next gen smartphone if it bears that name, which is uh so yeah. And so this is a survey by Cell Cell, mm-hmm. uh, and they surveyed um, three thousand Apple users in the United States this month, asking what name they would prefer, uh, rather Apple uses um, rather than uh, iPhone thirteen. So I mean, if I was right, you know, maybe it's gonna be the iPhone twelve S. So problem solved. There you go. It's hilarious to me. At, at first, I thought this was totally ridiculous. That people would not buy a phone because of the 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 number <laughs> it's going to be thirteen, but dude, thirteen man, it's 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 an unlucky number for some people. I I don't care. It's not unlucky for me. I never freak out about Friday the thirteenth or anything. But 
Friday the Thirteenth always feels a little bit weird, doesn't it? Like, I don't think <laughs> really? I don't think, don't think I don't think werewolves are real. Do. But if you were gonna get attacked by a werewolf, it would probably happen happen on Friday the Thirteenth. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, if I were gonna be in the woods by myself, so look, I don't put a lot of credence into the number thirteen being unlucky. But but if I were gonna be in the woods by myself, would you rather be in the woods by yourself? Lost in the Woods on a normal day or on Friday the 13th? <laughs> wow. I think we know the answer to that, right? So there is a little bit something going on there, if only artificial, because people are naturally scared of it. So I was like, oh, shoot, maybe um, iPhone 13 might not be the right name for this. Well, they do this with a lot of, you know, like skyscrapers downtown here in San Francisco. They don't have a 13th floor. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of buildings that, that are like that. And But I can't. can you think of a product that, you know, went through like with the iphone it went through it got up to like number 13 did they actually skip it can't think i, can't, of I mean i can't think of any products that got that number that high that number yeah me either so this might be one of the first ones uh, but i wonder if they did it's because they always end up changing the number to a completely different naming moniker nothing nothing makes it 13 it's 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 like mac os it's now you know, Mac OS this place, Mac OS that place. Whereas they could have just kept it, you know, with the uh, with the numbers. Well, they they had an iOS thirteen, and no one made any fuss about that, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Although as soon as I upgraded my OS to that, I crashed my car. Mm, and then some werewolves came and got you. Well, I was swerving out of the way because werewolves came into the street, <laughs> and I was like, ah, that I crashed into uh, yeah, yeah. into a herd of Bigfoot. <laughs> Is it Big Feet? That's bad luck. <laughs> big Feet, his whole family yeah, of Big, big Feet. Yeah, Bigfoot or Bigfoots. Well, it was multiple, so it was Big Feets, right? <laughs> so it was an entire family of Big Feets, and, uh, uh, you know, so that was right after I upgraded. So that is something to keep in mind. Anyway, that's a dumb story, but I thought you guys might find that amusing. <laughs> uh, that's one in five, don't you think? That's kind of high. Dude, that's what I was thinking. You know, 20% of people, right? Yeah. That's, now, of course. Do you think they were actually really going to stick to that, though? They just say that. Yeah, and, and this is, if anything else, this is just a really good marketing ploy by this company. Who are they? Sell, sell, to get people to talk about them. It's probably not even true at all. I, I'm dubious if they even did a, a poll. They said they they said they did, but... Um, <laughs> you don't believe any of it? They're just trying to get clicks, You don't think dude. they even did it at all? <laughs> they may not have even done it at all. Don't sue me, I'm just joking. But uh, they're clearly just trying to get some uh, marketing on their, on their company name. And, and look, here we are talking about them. So let's move on. Let's not give them any more juice. Let's talk about something else. Something beautiful. Lewis, we have what might be Apple's most beautiful store yet. And that's that's saying something that uh, I guess is being finished. Is it going to be finished this week? Or we it open t- today. Oh, did it really? Okay, here we go. I got it up right now. Take it away, Lewis. I'm just going to show us pictures while you talk about this. Yeah, so it's uh, Apple Tower Theater. It's in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, it's an old movie theater um, designed in, I think, 1927. Is that correct? Oh, all these tabs. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> re- designed by renowned early movie theater architect S. Charles Lee. Uh-huh. Have you heard of him? Probably oh, not. Oh, I'm a huge S. Charles Lee fan. <laughs> and you're right, it was but, 1927. Uh, this thing it really is beautiful, though. Uh, you know, they... they it's a giant movie theater, right? And it's got a giant uh, sort of it, like painting on the ceiling that looks like a sky that they redid. And it's all, you know, really ornate the way those old movie theaters really are, you know, like a, a cinema palace, right? And the the whole bottom floor is where they've got the, the you know, typical Apple, Apple tables and stuff. And they got the little uh, area where you can sit around and look at stuff. And, and up in the uh, balcony, they turned the balcony into a genius bar. Uh-huh. Uh huh. If you look at those pictures, which I don't know if you show, like I'm, I'm uh, showing them right you know, now. Like the stained glass they kept in there and refurbished. Uh, it's just really, it's gorgeous. Um, the the entryway, you know, big giant entryway with the big red carpet going up. I mean, th- this looks like you know the kind of theater that you would love to go to and see a movie right bef- before they turn into an Apple store. <laughs> yeah, <remember laughs> they... like you know that sort of grand experience of like wow this is when movies were movies and and it was an event to go out and see it right and it's in la right hollywood so yeah 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 perfect oh yeah there and, it uh, is right there have huh? you seen the pictures there's some pictures on the on the net of the before um uh, and uh, yeah there's one in that post of the there is? side by side are there other ones that you're saying uh, yeah i'm just looking at it from the la times 
Oh yeah. You know, it's kind of yeah, it was pretty run down, sort of pretty dingy looking. And of course, it, it's all artificial. Oh wow, light, there it is. It? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that that honestly, that picture with the uh, that must be like the original look, launch picture. It's black and white. It looks like it came from like the like the uh, archives of uh, Congress or something. <laughs> that picture with the uh, the giant kind of mural on the. I don't know. It's a mural. What you call it? But the the giant painting on the on the roof. It, 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 it makes it look like a giant skylight. Yeah. 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 But it's not, is it? It's it's all artificial lighting in there. So it's actually yeah. there's no there's no natural light in the place at all. Huh. By the looks and, of and it, it looks super bright and cheery. Spotless, yeah. of course. Everything refurbished and brought back up to you know, just I mean, I'm sure they had you know people artisans polishing every little nook and cranny of the place. So many artisans. Really, yeah. <laughs> Tim, Artisan polishers. Tim Cook is like the closest that you're gonna get to some kind of prehistoric king or uh, sultan or something. That's the only <laughs> kind of figure that could have accomplished such 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 a building, and with so much detail and beauty on the in, on the inside of it. It kind of begs the question, though: How did Apple even get a store like this? This seems like a historical monument. And how did Apple just, buy it? It seems like they would want to preserve just, it for actual theaters or something like that. I guess the answer is just money. <laughs> this is what they do. Yeah. They they do this all over the world, right? I mean, what's that power plant that they bought, Leander? They bought a power plant? That that big British power plant. Oh, Battersea? I don't know if they bought it. I think they're gonna be one of the t- I think they're gonna have um the European HQ there. Not a store, right? But but it's, it's a it's a real famous Building, yeah, the one right? the one that's on the front cover of the Pink Floyd yeah. album with the the pig um, balloon floating above it, Battersea Power Station. But it's been turned into like a massive, uh, from what I remember, um, redevelopment. So there's like offices and homes, condos, stores, leisure stuff. So I don't know if they have a, a store there. From what I can remember, they were gonna put they were gonna put you know four thousand people into offices there. Five pound. Oh, okay. So they didn't buy the whole thing, but so it says they're gonna occupy five hundred thousand square feet. Uh, once again, can't talk. Five hundred thousand square feet of that that giant power station. But the you know the the one that they recently uh, opened up in Rome is an old historic building that they've you know basically put their stamp on. But it you know it's I, I don't know how old that building was like. 1800s or something. Right? Wow, I'm looking so, at it right now. That is, yeah, very beautiful. Well, they've done it loads of times. You know, the one in uh, in London, the Regent uh, Regent Street, is an old historical building. One of the original ones in Soho, with that in the old post office. Remember that? That was one of the first Apple stores. That's in a old historic building. It's their mo. It's yeah. the way they roll. And they, you know, they go into these projects with a lot of respect for the the original thing, right? And they always try to, you know, maintain it, keep it, keep it like, I don't know accurate or whatever yeah they, yeah they, 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 they keep the flavor the initial bu- the original building and they they restore stuff that's in there you know as i said you know spend a lot of time really and, and they also create stuff that works with it right i mean if you look at that uh i can't remember what it was but there's some element of the the store in rome that was like a tribute to the you know roman culture wow yeah i was looking at the uh the one in Rome, and there is this ceiling. I, I, don't, I don't even know what you call it, mosaic? And there are all these geometric patterns on the ceiling. It looks like something out of the Louvre. And <laughs> it says it says they t- it took them thousands of hours to, to painstakingly clean that up and, and recreate, I guess, parts that were damaged. And you can see from the picture, I'm sorry for those of you that are listening, this is why you got to go to watch.thecultcast.com, watch.thecultcast.com. <laughs> you can check out these segments after the fact and watch the whole show. Um, how beautiful that restoration is. And then here is the uh, the Bangkok one. I, I don't think I've ever seen this one. That is truly magnificent. It looks like uh, it was carved out of like some kind of ancient tree or something. It's like a, it's like a it looks like a, a wooden funnel and the funnel like takes you, whisks you down into the uh, the Apple Store. Oh yeah, look at that, dude! That's crazy. It looks like a sauna in there. That'd be cool if it doubled as a sauna. Uh, yeah, it's a <laughs> whirlpool. A wooden roof resembles an enormous whirlpool that whisks you down into the center of the store. Wow! Whisks your money out of your pocket. That's what it's doing. <laughs> hey, y'all. That's the sound they of really your money leaving your pocket. Stores. Uh. 
here's the uh, here's a 360 degree panorama of the Grand Central Station. Oh, we're not gonna do that one. I, I I've, yeah, you, okay. I've seen. I've never actually visited that one. I'd like to go and I haven't check it either. out. I haven't either. Am I sharing my screen? Okay, good. Uh, okay. Well, that's that's all the different stores. Yeah, not to fanboy too hard, but no one <laughs> does retail experiences like Apple. I mean, they spend. I can't imagine how much money they spend on these, and uh, the attention to detail. It puts you into a state of euphoria. They're they're so incredibly <laughs> beautiful. I'm not I'm not joking. I mean, I've said this before. They are architected to be, well to be landmarks of Apple's uh, unrivaled design prowess, for one thing. But then the other the other benefit is you go into these these spaces and they're so beautiful. They put you into like this this almost like a euphoric state and you just don't care that you're gonna be spending all of this money because you feel so good just being in these spaces. I think that's what they're going for. Kazoon tight. Thank you, fun. Excuse me. That was a that was a true dad sneeze. You should be you should be proud of that. I always try to sneeze as loud as I can because I know that as a kid, those are the things that like startle you when you are just sitting there doing something and your dad just blasts out this absolutely crazy raucous sneeze. And those are the those are the wonderful memories that you that you have when you get older <laughs> is like your dad's the power of your dad's sneezes. You know what I mean? Those are the things yeah. that you brag to your friends about. You're like, my dad sneezed <laughs> and it woke me up. So I just let him fly, man. I don't put my hands over my mouth or anything. I just I do a full on torso wag and I just blast down and, and let the sneeze shoot me back up. That was a good one, Leander. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's a little power, too much information. Power of the dad's sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, there you go. Apple stores, truly magnificent. There's all theaters here in California. Absolutely lovely. You know, that um there's a whole have you been to the one down in San Jose, Lewis? Um Mm-mm. The movie theater in downtown San Jose. Oh my goodness, what's it called? They, they, um, Apple actually had. An, they, they, uh, the, I went because I went to the Apple event there, where they unveiled the U2 iPod, and they had U2 there. You were you were there for that? Yeah. Oh my, that is and, like a momentous event in Apple's history. That's crazy. Uh, uh yeah. <laughs> uh, clearly, you're and, not as uh, big of a, a YouTube fan as I am. Well, um, I was just thinking. I still, I still got the press release kit here somewhere. I don't know why I kept that one. I, what I wanted was a was an iP U two U two iPod, oh, yeah. but they they didn't give one to anybody, so um, I missed out on that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, there's there's beautiful theaters all over California. Like these, they they're up in around the same era, you know, from the 30s and the the 40s. Hmm. Um, tons of really beautiful theaters. I'm showing the one in Singapore right now, and it looks like a giant bubble. Gorgeous. And they're all so unique to their respective geographic regions and and cultures that uh i mean they just don't look anything like each other they they really are works of art in and of themselves and um a testament to apple's care and love for for design no i think it's pretty i think it's pretty good they're building up these old buildings and and restoring them and and keeping all of the original flavor rather than tearing them down i mean nothing could be worse than some you know like awful I'm not a big fan. Like the 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 store here in um, San Francisco's Union Square, which was custom built. You know, I mean, it's an impressive space, I guess. But you know, I find I don't find it. As, I I think I would prefer to go to something like this. You know, an old an old uh, the the Tower Theater than 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 the uh, than the newer ones. I find the new ones a bit you know sterile, to be honest. Well, not all of them are. I mean, this new one is. Uh, let's see here. The one I'm trying to pull up the uh, the one in Seattle. It is truly a beautiful space. And and uh, let me see. Can I bring this up? Apple University Village. Yeah, here we go. So this is the one that I go to. Um, and actually, I don't feel like this is a very good picture of it. They took it at night. But what they did was is they took this entire mall. It's an outdoor mall. And there's buildings that form a square. And in the middle, there was a parking lot. So what they did was, and Apple didn't wasn't the only one that did this. Um, the mall owners were working on this for a while. But they built parking garages around the perimeter of of all of different stores, and then they took the parking lot, which was kind of a bummer because it was like the best place to park in the entire place because it literally spit you out right in front of the Apple Store, and now you have to like walk a half block to get there. But <laughs> they got rid of the parking lot, and I think Apple did this. They they built this really beautiful store with all these serene outdoor and sp- outdoor spaces this beautiful mix of like concrete and risers where you could like sit and watch the whole square and uh and they just made a really beautiful place to hang out and now when you go down there there's always people hanging out down there and even though it was a major bummer to uh to lose the parking lot what they did was actually really beautiful and it improved the area a lot and the store 
you can't really see from this picture I'm showing. Maybe you can. You can see how high the ceilings are. It's just really magnificent. They have these these ginormous doors that kind of swivel on pivots. And so they can open them all up, and then the doors seem like they virtually just disappear, and it turns like the whole Apple Store into like this outdoor air experience. Yeah, they, they've done that with Very a cool. bunch of places. Yeah. Oh, they have. Is that like a design that they reused over and over again? Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what it's like at um, at the Union Square store. That the, the doors um, open, and of course at Apple's HQ they have that with it. With the um, in the cafeteria they have massive doors that they can open up, and so it's open up to the outdoor space. Well, now I'm less impressed. You, you're meaning to tell yeah. me that they're just like. Like uh, farting out the same design over and over yeah. again. Yeah. Oh, Whoa! right. Hold on a sec. Shout out to uh, who was this? Uh, I don't see someone in the chat. Oh, uh, Christopher Gavin. He said, "Check out the the Chicago store, dude. Check out this store. Wow, that is a beautiful store. That's the one on the Miracle Mile, right? Uh, uh, I don't know. Down by the river. I mean, does Oprah live like above that? Like Michigan right Avenue. God, and look from at the that. top, it looks like a MacBook lid. It does yeah. look like a MacBook lid, doesn't it? And it must have like a lower level too because – so for those of you listening – God, I'm sorry. This is such a boring statement. For those of you listening, <laughs> uh, you're going to have to go back. Watch that to watch that to com. We should have done this at the end because people are probably tuning out. Um, this entire store is basically just made of glass. All the walls are glass, and then there's like a lid on top of it. And then there are staircases, these very huge grand staircases on both sides outside these concrete staircases – and they must have like some kind of like subterranean part of the store because they can't really see anything in the glass store. There's that <laughs> the ginormous Apple screen, but other than that, there the doesn't really seem to be any products for sale. So I'm gonna I can't guess see those the are heating bill on that. Yeah, well, Apple can afford it. Okay, let's move on. We could keep doing this for the next hour. So many beautiful Apple stores, but um, let's go ahead and talk about Apple TV now. I thought that you guys might find this interesting. I, I did a little research because, as oh, you no. know, PSA, <laughs> PSA, your Apple TV Plus subscription, I believe it runs out at the end of this month for everybody. I'm pretty sure it's for everybody. Uh, unless you just bought a new iPhone. But if you bought a new iPhone, um, do you still get a year? Of course. Yeah, okay. Let me back up. If you <laughs> got a free year of Apple TV Plus on when it first came out, then your subscription ends tomorrow so that's the best way to say it because they were still giving a year subscription to people who bought the the service after the fact and so your your apple tv plus subscription might go longer but if you were one of the original apple tv plus subscribers via like a hardware purchase your subscription your subscription is about to run out and as of july 1st in the dead of the night tc is gonna slink down your chimney he's gonna reach into your wallet and pull out that fiber so you need to decide, do you want to keep your Apple TV Plus subscription going? And I was just doing some research, trying to figure out, well, how much content does Apple TV have now? Because we talk about this all the time, and it just feels like every single week we are hearing stories about Apple making deals, starting production, post-production, renewing something. And so I went through this enormously long list of stuff on Wikipedia, and I counted how many... Uh, Apple TV show, original shows and, and uh, movies and documentaries and biopics and everything are, are out or coming out. And here's what I came up with. Now, I counted fast, so this might not be 100% accurate. But Did you use your fingers and toes? I, I used a, a pencil, and I closed one eye, <laughs> and I counted as I went down, so you know it's pretty accurate. Um, 178 original programs. Now, that includes series with multiple episodes, movies, biopics, everything. 176 178, excuse me, 178 unique original Apple programs, give or take a few, really? I'm sure. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a now, surprisingly large number. It is a surprisingly large number. Check this out, Lewis. From what I could tell from counting on this Wikipedia page, 76 of those have not even been released. They're in production now. They're currently actively making 76 different pieces of original Apple content. This includes movies, shows, biopics, you know, docu-series, you, you name it tons of stuff and i was looking at this um this this story from this week let me see here if i can uh, find this where did it go oh yeah here we go uh apple tv plus prepares a visit to nathan Pyle's whimsical strange planet now this this will probably not be exciting or will not get the uh the nips into an active state for most people they're like i don't care about this at all but to me this highlights 
that Apple is not just going mainstream with their content anymore, which, you know, when they launched with all this rid ridiculous mainstream content, Jennifer Aniston, Oprah, uh, 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 Bruce Springsteen, right? And stuff that a lot of people who may not be interested in because that's kind of content that, or those are actors that have been around for a long time and they may not pull in the younger audience, so to speak. But now here you have... Nathan Pyle, Strange Planet. Now, this looks looks like a weird cartoon. I don't know what it's about. I don't know very much about this graphic series. I guess it's a popular graphic novel. And they have uh, Dan Harmon, who I think uh, penned, yes, the creator and writer of Rick, Rick and Morty. So you're going to be blending a hugely popular graphic, graphic uh, novel series with a writer who is very popular. And they're going to be creating this new series for Apple TV+. Plus. So you have this. You have a bunch of like really cool-looking sci-fis coming to Apple TV+. Plus. The uh, Foundation let's series from Isaac Asimov. Yeah. yeah, so are you familiar with this? Because I, I don't really know very much about it. I just know, from, I just know what I read. Uh, I me neither. You know, okay. I, read, I read a couple of the books years ago, I think, but uh, I don't really remember very much about it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I don't either, but they have so much content coming out all the time, and I guess that's kind of my point, is they just they, they are dumping money into this and, and, and spending expending huge amounts of effort uh, creating all of this different content, and I feel like they're right on the cusp of actually being worth five bucks a month. Now, it depends on if you if there's a, <laughs> if there's a if there's a show that that catches your fancy, right? I mean, for me, I would be willing to pay five dollars just to see what happens and see when it finally comes out, which I think is happening in August, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but check this out. So, uh, Isaac Asimov's Foundation series is one of the most anticipated series. It's going to uh, come out in September. The original sci-fi novels were groundbreaking. I'm reading from Cult Mac here. Influencing Star Wars and other series. They tell the story of a band of exiles struggling to save humanity after the fall of a galactic empire. <laughs> okay. You've piqued. You've piqued my interest and uh, also uh, two of my nips. And I have three. So that's two out of three. That's pretty good. Uh, I don't talk about the third one very often, but um, it is there. Also, coming to uh, Apple TV+. Plus. The uh, problem with John Stewart. Can I bring this up? Do I have this up? No, I don't. Like an absolute <laughs> amateur. So the problem with <laughs> with John Stewart, it will be uh, John Stewart's uh, return to making content. Here we go, and that is coming in the fall of 2021. You may have heard. Is that, that a he weekly? On, is that a weekly show? Uh, let's see here. John Stewart is coming back to TV this fall after six years off air. He will. Uh, be returning in a show called The Problem with John Stewart. It doesn't say if this is a miniseries or if this will be an ongoing show. I'm going to guess for for the start it will be a miniseries because that seems to be the way they do it and then if it's popular if they will um continue it. Now you may remember there was some there was a little bit of controversy with John Stewart recently on the Stephen Colbert report. I sh <laughs> I shan't say what they were talking about because I don't want to get banned. <laughs> but it was definitely an interesting conversation, and John Stewart, he, I, th I think he's he's beloved for being um, a fair person and and not just being tied to one political side or the other, which I think is something that a lot of people enjoy. And so I'm curious to see the types of topics that he that he discusses on his show, and it could be an interesting Problems, show, probably, right? Yeah, or maybe he'll be talking about his own problems problems you know, just just the problems <laughs> that he's encountered in the last six years he's like my toilet hasn't been working every time i flush the turds don't go down and i'm not sure what to do about it and that's a legitimate problem that he might talk about uh let's see here uh before apple tv plus introduces either of those shows it will premiere mr corman a uh emmy or starring emmy award winner joseph gordon levitt love it i had not even heard about this one so i guess there's some uh there we go. Ooh, it's a drama centered on an elementary school teacher. That sounds promising. <laughs> this this sounds like it will be as entertaining as uh, the detect the detectorists. Isn't that the show that you were really oh, into? That's my favorite show. What are you talking about? That's a great show. <laughs> two two old boring British guys uh, uh, use the uh, metal detectors on the beach. That sounds like uh, Apple TV Plus material right there. There is also uh, the Shrink Next Door, which um, I guess is going to be a dark comedy starring Will Ferrell and Paul Rudd. And this is going to be coming November 12th. The trailer is a little weird. Uh, and and Will Ferrell looks like he's reprising his role as um, 
cowbell playing musician uh, in, in uh, that SNL sketch about uh, Blue Oyster. Is that the Blue Oyster Cult, right? One of the most epic sketches of all time. And he looks like he's dressed up in that in that uh, costume again. Dude, I saw Paul Rudd on um, Conan. Did you guys know Conan O'Brien is ending his show? Did you guys hear that? I think so. Okay, I, I, I didn't know this until recently. I just happened to run across a video on YouTube, and it was like Co- Conan O'Brien's farewell shows. And he had Paul Rudd on, and um, it was a really great episode. It was It was Paul Rudd and Bill Hader. It was actually really funny. But uh, uh, I think somebody said, like, Paul Rudd doesn't age. Dude, Paul Rudd doesn't age. I don't know how old he is, but he always looks the same. He looks young in every single thing that you see him in. So congratulations to having great genetics, Paul Rudd. Great skin. He must moisturize. Who's playing the shrink? Him or um? Paul Rudd is Will playing Ferrell. a shrink. And, uh, He's Will the Ferrell, shrink. Yep. And Will Ferrell is the guy who is... Uh, I guess this is patient. So um, I don't know. This is going to be a mini series. Or his, or his neighbor, huh? Or his neighbor? It, well, there's not the shrink next door. Doesn't that kind of imply that he's his neighbor? Uh, that is that is actually is great logic right there. <laughs> I didn't read that far into it. Uh, you, <laughs> you read. Yeah. So uh, lots of content coming to Apple TV Plus, and I gotta say, I'm not. I I'm not sold yet. I will probably let my membership lapse for at least a few months, at least until C comes back. And then, you know what? Dude, I don't know. I mean, the other thing about Apple TV Plus that I love is their sound quality is just magnificent. They have, the, if not the best, one of the best, um, uh, well, they have some of the best sound in their series. All their shows are like Dolby Atmos, 7.1, 5.1, 12.1, 18.1. I mean, you name it, they got it in there. And then, of course, really beautiful HDR, 4K everything. If you have HomePods in front of your TV like I do, the Atmos, the virtualized Atmos is just beautiful and atmospheric. It just floats all around. It's such a simple setup, and you get that amazing sound on, on I think, all the shows that Apple TV Plus has. So they're, they're built for the future. Whereas with Disney Plus, some of the shows have Atmos. I think some of them have Atmos. Some of them don't. Or a lot of them don't. Um, Netflix, you have to be paying Netflix their, their top tier their 4K top tier plan, which is $20 a month, I think, to even wow. get the Atmos or the 4K. And so just the, the Apple offer is is a tremendous value. Now, they don't have the content. That's the trade-off. But <laughs> you get the 4K HDR. But what they do is in... Get, <laughs> yeah, that one show that they have <laughs> looks fantastic. Sounds really good. <sighs> what mm. the heck? Who is this guy in the chat just freaking spamming? Do we have any moderators in here? Oh, forget it. I'm gonna boot this guy personally. Put Whoa. this user. Can I? I'm just. I'm booting him out. How do you like that boot in your in in your bum? <laughs> He's flying <laughs> through the air. He's out of here. All right, guys. I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up there. I felt good. Now that was um, that was cathartic for booting that guy out of here. <laughs> I lost my boot too. It's still in his keister, but oh uh, I'll let him keep it <laughs> anyway. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up there. That's all the cool cast we have for you guys this week. If you want to come tell us about your favorite shows, we're all on Twitter. I'm at Airfon, E-R-F-O-N. Lander is at L. Caney. Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. This has been the cool cast, the best 30-plus minute album conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the cool cast come out every Thursday night. I want to thank everyone for listening. I want to give a quick yeah, 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 to Adam Broussard. And I'm not going to explain it. I don't want to hear nothing about it. And we'll see you guys next time where's the end button hold on I'm feeling for it it's here somewhere I think that's it ready that was it I got it first try alright I'm about a uh, I'm about a 7 out of 10 on the I must pee now before I pee my pantaloons loose huh what are you at I'm about an 11 out of 10 on I'm <laughs> Wait, starving. So, yeah. If you're at 11, that means you've already had to relieve the pressure valve, right? <laughs> no, it's, 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 that's no problem. I'm 3 out of 10 on that. It's, it's <laughs> the, the starvo, starvometer. It's pegged. There's no shame in just letting out a quick sh- a quick dribble. you got to relieve some of the pressure. We've all oh done my. it, Lewis. 
I'm intrigued by some of these shows. This is kind of a good segment. Yeah. I know there's all sorts of good stuff in there, huh? I think most people just don't know. They don't follow. Later, Jamie. Later, Level Remix. I think Konoth got bingo. Later, Tom. Peace out, Jammin. Get lost, Level Remix. I mean, come back, please. <laughs> Mr. Coleman, the 